Hey guys, welcome back to Pete's Garage. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to inspect your fuel filter and if necessary, how to change out your fuel filter as well as how to change out your fuel water separator. Now we're gonna be doing this on a 50 horsepower Tahatsu. If you've got a 40 or a 60, all the steps are the same. So this video is for you. If you have something else, then you need to check your owner's manual. Now on this 50 horsepower Tahatsu, it's recommended to change the fuel water separator either annually or every 100 hours. You should also change it if water is present inside. Now how you're gonna tell if there's water present inside is by checking the fuel filter on your outboard. This is something that you should check every time before you get on the water. The way you're gonna tell if there's water inside is if the red ring inside the filter housing has moved up at all. That red ring has moved, water's inside. While you're checking it, you should also be looking for any kind of debris in the housing. If there's debris in the housing, again, you need to change it as well as change the fuel water separator. Basically, the fuel filter on your outboard is the first stop for fuel after the fuel water separator. And that's the first stop for fuel coming from your fuel tank. So if you see water in the fuel filter on your outboard, that means you've got water somewhere in your system and you just need to start by replacing all of your filters. Now to change the fuel filter, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter wrench. If you're gonna change the fuel filter and the housing, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter wrench plus a pair of pliers. In order to change the fuel water separator, you're gonna need a fuel water separator. Tatsu recommends a 10 micron fuel water separator. You're also going to need either a filter wrench or a strap wrench. You see here, this is your fuel filter, right? And you can see down at the bottom, there's this red ring. So when you're doing your visual checks to make sure everything's all right before you get on the water, you want to make sure that this ring is still at the bottom of your fuel filter. If this has moved up at all, that's because you have water in your fuel and you need to go ahead, you need to change your fuel filter and you need to change your fuel water separator. I've got this set up with a quick disconnect. So we're gonna go ahead and just disconnect our fuel line. We got our rag, we're gonna set our rag underneath because these lines are gonna have a little bit of fuel in them and we just want something that's gonna catch that. We take our needle nose pliers, just squeeze and with these just squeeze and work them down a little bit. We're gonna grab our 13 millimeter socket and just disconnect this bolt on top and so on top here you're gonna have you're gonna have a nut and a washer now the fuel filter replacement kit does not come with these so try not to lose those make sure you keep track of where those go and there is a second washer on top as well so we've got our fuel filter off now you can attempt to pull this bottom part out, but the fuel is going to cause swelling, which will make this part, this part of the filter very hard to get off. Um, so typically what I do is I just go ahead and I replace the whole thing. Um, if you want to check for debris inside of here, you can take this to a vise and open it up that way. All right. So we've got our new brand new fuel filter to reinstall. It's pretty simple. Take one of our washers, put it on top. Put this in place, put our other washer on next, and then our 13 millimeter nut. Just snug it up so it doesn't move. And then we are going to go ahead and reattach our fuel lines. So you want to make sure these, when you reattach these, make sure you get them good and snug all the way at the top. You don't want those coming off on you. You know, reinstall these clamps. You can see where they were from the factory and you want to try to get them in that same spot. Now, the next thing I like to do, and I like to do with all my filters, is I like to come in here and throw the date on the fuel filter so I know when the last time I changed it. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reconnect our fuel line to the engine. We're gonna get into the fuel water separator next. So look here, this is our fuel water separator. Now, this is where they're located on a Sabine skip. If you have something other than a Sabine skiff or a different model Sabine skiff, they might be located somewhere else. That being said, if you see how this looks, this is what it's going to look like. All right, we're going to set down a couple shop rags. 
because there is going to be fuel in this system so we want to try to catch as much of it as possible. So what I've got here is a filter wrench and basically we're going to slide it on there. With your old filter it's okay to squeeze a little bit. Just start loosening it up. So we went ahead, we've got the new fuel filter, we've got the date on here. All right, we're gonna take a tiny, tiny little bit of marine grease and just hit that rubber gasket with it. Basically, you need some kind of lubrication on this gasket before you put it back in place. All right, once we do that, slide this up in here. And again, like you're not trying to go super tight. You basically want this a little bit past hand tight. So to get fuel back in the system, we're just gonna come over to our primer ball and just gonna squeeze it. And we're gonna keep squeezing it till we see fuel getting coming into our fuel filter. All right guys, hope you learned something. Thanks for following along with this maintenance series. And thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.